It's all right. I had a few emails anyways. Yeah, I can't imagine all the, the just the weeks leading up to this is probably just chaos, making sure everything goes to, as planned. I mean, I'm sure there's permitting involved in a lot of this shit. And then not even to mention like the flat out Friday stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> like that's a whole nother beast in yeah. its own, you know? Yeah, we, you know, it's 10 years now. So Mama Tried is pretty streamlined. Um, being at the rave has helped that process so much. Um, the only permits we have to worry about are tattoo artists. Oh, and okay. it's really on them to take care of that, you know, oh, dealing with bad. the municipalities and whatnot. Um, Fiserv is, is great too, you know, race the rave and fiserv both their staff is uh, they're so professional and on it that it makes it hard to screw it up yeah um you know we're meeting months ahead of time staying in contact with each other and like i said it's 10 years now so i've been, i've had a, i've had a team here that has been with me a majority of those years mm -hmm. so they know how i operate they know what i'm after yeah they've done it many times um and I do, I, I pride myself on making sure that that, that shit's dialed when, when it's got to be dialed. And we really just fight the little fires to make sure they don't turn into big ones. So yeah, yeah. at this point, it's it's kind of on cruise control um, with things going. Everybody knows what to expect. Yeah, There's a lot of builders and people and vendors that have been here many years in a row. Mm -hmm. So they know what to expect. You get, you get new ones, you know, you got to yeah. work them in. They get nervous and lots of questions and whatnot. But... Yeah. My team's rad. Uh, yeah, when I, even when I came this morning and I started loading my shit up, they, they were real helpful outside. It didn't make me feel like I was inconveniencing yeah. people yeah. getting in. It was, it's got a lot of southern hospitality to it. You oh, know that's what I mean? great, man! I appreciate hearing so, that. Um, yeah. No, but like I said, it's uh, it, it's a real not even just like being able to have the bike in there, like which is a completely different feeling experience, honor if yeah. you will, but just have it like it's an inspiring show as, as what i was saying at the other fucked up part of the audio yeah um it's a very inspiring show because whether you're walking around and seeing this very eclectic amount of bikes that there's no one vibe going on no you know so as someone that's a creative mind you can you can nerd out on something that you don't see every day and maybe pull and extract some ideas and add that flavor somewhere else and yeah. so it's almost like a learning experience yeah. you know yeah as, as long as you go into it with open mind and 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 ex and really like immerse yourself into the experience because yeah. it really is it's i the bikes like go by the wayside for me mm -hmm. pretty quickly and i'm i'm more i'm more in there for like hugs and high fives and making yeah, memories yeah. with people right so a lot of the people that we that we invite are like i've had personal experiences yeah. with them you know and i we're in the motorcycle world so i know they'll bring the heat with the bikes and even if they don't i don't care yeah it's not about that it's about the people that show up here want to be here they add to the environment they add to the folks that are coming in environment yeah. and make us like create a room that is magical it's like you can feel the energy in there and people are genuine and want to hang yeah, out and yeah. talk and like you've been I'm, I'm sure you've been in many many shows where you're like man like why did i even waste my time coming here this is this is bullshit yeah you know because they don't it's not they just look at it as maybe a dollar sign to try to make some cash or maybe they want to maybe they want to get their name out there it's like a it's a publicity type of thing but you do it that way it doesn't work it's yeah. just it you know it'll work for the masses but it just doesn't don't work yeah. for me and yeah, it doesn't they, work for you know the people that i want to hang out with no i i completely agree i feel like substance over quantity you know or quality over yeah. you know quantity it, it really does provide a, a better user experience and you know when you're in these places that there's so much everybody's got an angle yeah you know yeah whether yeah. like you said it's a uh, i'm trying to get my name out there i'm trying to make money this has got to do this yeah it's like, man, this, I look at it like it's a way to, to get the gears rolling as the, the, the seasons start to change yeah. to get you ready to get back out there and live yeah. this motorcycle life, you know? Yeah. You know, fo folks like that, um, they, I mean, they get weeded out around here, yeah. you know, and, and not like if that's your play and you want to do it that way, it's cool. Just, you're not just going to be, you're not going to do it here. You're not going to fit in. You're going to. You're gonna have a bad time, yeah. and and it's happened, and it's fine. Like I, I don't hold any grudges or or whatever. Like if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Yeah. I'm not. Scott and I aren't out here to to like prove anything. We're here to have a good time and like experience life and 
and be proud of what we're doing, you know? And yeah. Well, well, Scott's kind of in the service industry. Yeah. So he understands yeah. the, the aspect of atmosphere, uh, creating an experience you are the motorcycle, yeah. you know, the wrench, the, the, yeah. the guy. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you you kind of I think it's a really good symbiotic relationship where you both bring something to the table. One hundred percent, man. And then uh, he's helped me so much. You know, I, when I when he first approached me, I told him to fuck off. I didn't want anything to do it <laughs> just because I like that. What I said earlier about being jaded, about going to the yeah. these shows that are just it just it doesn't work. And through the years hanging out with scott is has been wonderful he's he's brought me he's he's helped me grow and and experience a life in many different ways yeah. and i hope that i have had that impact on him as well mm -hmm. you know i i'm a little you know rough and gruff around the edges and a little loose and, and he's way he's a lot more with it when it comes to you know keeping his mouth shut in certain situations yeah. or saying the right thing or being aware of being a little bit more aware of what's going on yeah. you know and i've 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 learned a ton from him about that. And yeah. it's a it's a good skill, especially if we're gonna do what we're gonna do or what we're doing. Yeah. Um, you gotta think a little bigger. <laughs> yeah. A little bigger. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Um well, how you know when that first came around? Because I know he used to have another show that he used to do here for what like Scott was doing the other show. Yeah, yeah, Scott. It's called the Rocker, was called the Rocker Box. It was awesome. It was an outdoor festival in River West, which is an alternative neighborhood in Milwaukee. Uh -huh. Um it was during the summer, on the street, basically shut down a really awesome, like, thoroughfare of, of a neighborhood that's very colorful and mm. wild. So you get all kinds of all kinds of people, all kinds of motorcycles. Mm. The shops would open their doors and, you know, there'd be slanging Kool-Aid and cans of beer and whatever they can sell on that yeah. weekend just to participate in what was going on. And it was awesome. It grew large and... You know, as things do, it got a little bit too big for its britches and stuff went down in insurance, this, that, and the other. I'm like, you know what? Maybe this is a little bit, it's not worth it anymore. So yeah. we ended up ended up selling it and donate the money to charity and was looking for something to do. Yeah. And we had we had sparked a relationship. I was I was fabricating downtown and we we ended up doing work for his restaurants mm -hmm. and we just hit it off and you now rest is history, I guess. And we started growing and you know, like you like you were saying earlier about the the very eclectic um, group of motorcycles and people. Mm -hmm. That's very deliberate. Yeah. Um, I I want to make sure that when when people come here, they do get inspired. They get, and I use it. I say it a lot. Is like the chopper kid is going to bring their chopper and they're going to hang out in this room that we create for them, right next to the guy that brought their race bike or. The guy that has a stock bike that rode a million miles on it or a, I don't know, a full custom ridiculous thing that I can't even understand. It breaks, yeah. you know, blows my mind. And all those people are going to work together to, because they're forced to. Yeah. I'm not going to create like, eh, this is a chopper area. This yeah, is a stock yeah. bike area. You know, I, I don't, it's way, way more beneficial for everybody in the building to just, just immerse into everything. When you everything. think about what motorcycles, like you're, you're, I, I think we all have our own way, path to it, but. My first bikes that I was riding as a personal was a sport bike. Yeah. And I remember you'd go to a gas station, you see another sport bike. Hey man, how you? And this is before, yeah. you know, Instagram and shit. Hey man, nice bike, man. I, I I ride too. Hey, we show up here on Thursdays, and then we go do a rip. You should just show yeah. up. Yeah. And you just kind of like blindly show up at yep. a time at a gas station, but you're you're hanging out with like people that aren't like really in your circle. Like one dude's a doctor, one dude owns a business, mm -hmm. one dude can barely pay the pay for the gas on this trip yep. and everybody's like yeah. you would think they were all like you know best buddies from ever well man, you know? like you have to be good at everything you can't be or you can't just be good at one thing you got to have like you got to be able to to do a lot of different shit yeah and then when you're in a group like that and you have folks that maybe lean towards being better at certain stuff like as a collective whole yeah it's unstoppable mm -hmm. and you know you keep as long as everybody's aware of that yes yeah. you know Based, I, I don't want stays in their lane is really not the directive yeah. I want to put there, but it's like I'm good at I'm good here, but I'm gonna learn from you and I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna build my skill based on how you yeah. operate, you know, and just keep keep pulling and keep growing and keep rising tide floats all boats. Exactly. The 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 concept of staying in your lane is something that it's it's kind of like it has in my mind in certain scenarios it has a place. Yeah. But then it also it has a hundred contradictions. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So it's like I I think it's 
it's like don't come to this show and then next week try to do it across the high street. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's yeah. to stay in your lane. Yeah. Right. But come here, be inspired. Maybe take that and let it funnel through you. And maybe not a exact copy of this comes out, but a regurgitation of yeah. something that was processed through you, through who you are and what you see. And it's different. Yeah. You know? Yeah, for sure. So that's basically how building a bike is. Yeah. You take your inspirations and they funnel through you. And then now you have something that has a little bit of all the culture that you've been inspired yeah. by in it. Yeah. You know? All the traveling you've done, all the people you've met, you know, the different bikes you've seen. Yeah. Um, Scott was a big inspiration on me uh, when it comes to racing. I, man, I was a, I was a jaded chopper kid. Yeah. Right. Just barely paying the bills i had a bike i was starting to see how the world worked and starting to learn how to make money outside of my job and yeah um he helped me get into racing and i you know he then i started helping this program called build program we help high school students build motorcycles um and that got me into racing you know and then that racing got me in they were road racing and that got me into riding dirt bikes and mm -hmm. then it then we're in india riding royal enfields all over yeah. the place and i'm <laughs> you know I'm a I'm Harley through and through. My old man ha still has a shop, yeah. builds all my motors and, and transmissions and whatnot. But I look at bikes as a like Swiss Army knife. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. just you got to have a tool for everyone. Maybe a couple tools <laughs> for the same yeah. job. You know, but it I was I was I got to ride my motorcycle last night and today, and I got to ride with a really close buddy that I haven't in a long time. Yeah, and it just it man it fills my soul. It fills my you get on a motorcycle, it's just like, yeah, it changes life. It changes the way I look at stuff, you know, there it is. <laughs> that's, you know, that's, that's how it works. And, and, you know, motorcycles get a little bit of a bad rap, you know, but once you get on and you understand it and you experience it and you, you really do it right. And yeah, you know, the, not just getting on and commuting to down the highway and back, I'm talking like, getting in there you know yeah. seeing the city it's you, you just see places different you smell them different you feel yeah. them different all the senses are getting tapped yeah yeah meet all meet wonderful people mm -hmm. um, the mule motorcycle community is awesome you know yeah i feel like once i kind of started getting into more or less the chopper oriented shows your born freeze giddy ups southern throwdowns it just kind of uh as a guy like, i'm in my 20th year in the, in the motorcycle industry but it really wasn't until like 2016 that I felt like I started getting real influence by going to these different things. Cause I was the, I've been a part of the industry. So my stuff was Sturgis, Rot Rally, yeah. you know, Arizona Bike Week. Like yeah. that, that was the money grabs, you yep. know? And then you, you're surrounded by people that are, not that I'm talking shit about it, but you're surrounded by people that play biker on the weekend. Yeah. You know, and they it, they don't really care about the culture because it's just a thing to do this weekend. Yeah, and that, you know, and, and that's fine. There's a place for yeah. for that. It, that it, that has to be. It right? has to. It has to, and and yeah. that's a huge part of of making the motorcycle community thrive. However, if you can pull some folks out yeah. of that and get them to you know buy in fully, yeah, I'm I'm in. You know, I'll and try. that's that's the concept of podcasting. That's what Dan does. That's what. I'm trying to do, we're all trying to like expose this more like, like personal, more, more, uh, uh, meaningful layer to motorcycling. Yeah. You yeah. Know? I, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not a religious person by any means. In fact, I'm pretty not at yeah, all. Same. Right. But <laughs> motorcycles would be the closest thing to religion for me. You yeah. know, I start talking like a hippie when I get into motorcycle mode, right. Yeah. You know, be, <laughs> witching hour, <laughs> you know, uh, Rocky Mountains, the best song in your helmet, crying. You know, like what yeah. what what other thing can get you to like feel all that at one time? And then I, it as soon as I start talking about it, I get chills. I get taken right back yeah. to that spot. I know the turns. I know the smells. I know how hot it was. Yeah. Um, you know, and then I start. Then I'm I'm like, I'm not a big emotional guy. So as soon yeah. as that starts happening, yeah, I'm firing texts off to. You know, my wife and talking yeah. to my kids and like it, it, it wakes something up in me yeah. and I just have to grab it and run with it. No, it definitely does. And, um, you know, with you and, and working on bikes and, you know, getting in all that stuff, like how, like, like now, like what's it like now, like working on bikes and with, with your, your shop and all those kind of things, you know? I, so when I, I was raised in a bike shop. Yeah. Um, literally, uh, 
And I, so I learned from an early age what that meant. Yeah. From my dad's perspective, not from mine. Yeah. I was learning how he did it. I left, went to college, got a degree, did all that shit, moved back. And then it was different for me because I didn't want to do it like he did it because I was feel like I was growing and I saw yeah. some I saw some avenues that he could have he could have done better at. But I learned a shitload from him. I just feel like I feel like I needed to do something different because motorcycles weren't a part of his life anymore. He ran a shop. Didn't even own a motorcycle. You know? And I I I had a hard time with that. I'm like, "Man, I Yes, you work on bikes and yes, you ride motorcycles every single day. Yeah. But it's different. You yeah. know, you're doing it for a job. So motorcycles for me now aren't a job. Mm -hmm. um, I own a steel fabrication shop and I have a motorcycle shop inside of that shop. Nice. So, you know, building railings and, and working on steel stuff pays the bills. Nice. The motorcycles keep me invested in the motorcycle world, keeps my, my bucket full uh, with being creative. It also helps me monetarily here and there. Yeah. Um, I couldn't live on it. Yeah. But, you know, there's also other benefits in business when, you know, you're in a steel fab shop and you got bikes there too. So, yeah. Um, but I, I try very, very hard to make sure that, that I'm not getting jaded on motorcycles. I mm. don't, because I see my dad and I don't, I don't want to end up there. I want to be riding till I'm dead. Right. And it's a, it's a delicate balance. You yeah. know, um, I know I, I know exactly what you're talking about. I've seen it. I've you know, I've talked to people on this podcast over the last six years that are in that space. And they're they're kind of looking for a way back into yeah. loving it. But they it it all seems like a, a job to them. Yeah. You know, well, if you're not if you're not tied into your crew or if you're not out there making the memories and yeah. putting yourself out there to like the deeper you get into life, you get you get into your grooves. You know, mm -hmm. I'm I'm starting to realize that that my grooves are getting smaller, and yeah. I need motorcycle to be one of them. And I don't. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna fight for that one. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's other shit that. All right, I'll let that go. Uh -huh. But motorcycle is not going anywhere. I'm gonna. Yeah. I have to. It's just. And if you know, if I got to put a third wheel on the damn thing, or if I got to put a sidecar on the thing, I don't. You know, yeah. I'm doing it. I'm gonna go out and experience and do it until I can't. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, if, yeah, man, if, if my father-in-law heard me say that, he'd, he'd be <laughs> laughing in his boots right now. I built him a trike years back. I make fun of him so much. <laughs> yeah, I'll cut that out. <laughs> but no, that's, um, I think all that stuff plays into like the, you know, the feel. Like when you're a person that feels things and you, you, uh, you really like, you can take almost like an out-of-body experience when you're having a fucking amazing ride or you're at an amazing little party or event and you're like, this, this is like, I didn't know this could exist. You yeah. know what I mean? And yeah. it's like those kind of things I think is what kind of, um, it make you want to try to give other people the opportunity to experience it. Oh, right? dude, I try so much. I'm looking so forward to getting my kids out there and doing that with them. My kid's 10. We just started taking little trips here and there. Mom just approved a summer trip for yeah. us. So um, we're going to get to take him out on the road with me. Uh, any, any chance I get, um, like I went to Sturgis this year, I rode out, which is super important to me because I get a chance to separate, yeah. get with my guys and we, we have a hell of a time. We take no highways, all byways, just wherever the road takes us. Um, when we get there, I, I, I don't know, I don't know how it worked out, but I, I'm like, I got to bring bikes because I don't know if anybody's going to show up for what we're doing. Right. So I, I come loaded. I got three or four bikes with me. And three or four people show up and I end up riding choppers with everybody around town um, the whole time. And it was yeah. something unexpected, and but it was the best. I had my close buddy, Kevin Bass, with me all weekend. And normally in Sturgis, we'd be separated and we mm -hmm. do, but because he was on my bike mm -hmm. and, you know, we, he, yeah, he went out and did a shit, but I'm like, dude, just take my bike. Yeah. So, and I did that with our, our buddy Scrapper Dan. And um, man, we had a good time and it was so unexpected. And those are the, those are the times that, that I cherish because I, Dan, Dan probably wouldn't have been able, you know, he rode his bagger out, but mm -hmm. he wouldn't have been able to ride a chop around Sturgis, which, you know, you get to do that. You start, yeah, you, it gets you, gets you into places that, that you normally wouldn't go. Yeah, it gives yeah. you a little bit of a, a golden ticket to like, exactly. just, just plow your way into whatever. <laughs> yep. If there's an open door, just ride through it yeah. and <laughs> people are cool with it, you know, and 
that's a good feeling to share with folks. Yeah. Um, and, it, and that's something that is like fishing. You get, you get, you get a bite and, or you catch a giant fish and you want to do it again and again. And yeah. then you're going to tell your friends. And that's a good analogy for Sturgis because it is, even though it, you know, when you walk in at certain vantage points, it does look like Bagger City. It does look like a lot of that. Realistically, at the core and heart of it, there's always this chopper uh, acceptance, yeah. right? And, yeah. you know, like you said, you kind of do get the golden ticket to kind of jam in and out. And <laughs> so, nobody's so going awesome. nobody's gonna say, no, don't do that, you yeah. know? I, I do wish that more bars, more things out there kind of had the fuel cafe yeah. kind of like yeah. attitude. Because the craziest thing was like, uh, obviously the burnout on the bar is a very, it's it's a tradition now, right? <laughs> yeah. And I don't know what the first year that happened is, but um, it was crazy because, you know, we, we throw camp outs. Well, we throw one and then a close buddy of ours does one in Florida. Uh -huh. And we had this bar that, they're small. They're, we're talking like, his is like 100, 200, ours is like around 1,000, things yeah. like that. But it's just been going on longer. And we did this. We had a buddy that like this bar was kind of being an asshole. We were all in there buying beer, having a good time. And so we snuck the dude's bike in there and fucking just ripped it. <laughs> and it went crazy. And it was on ridiculousness. Oh, really? Like that. Yeah. And um, and then literally that was that took place in October. And then two months later, we're here. And then that <laughs> takes place. And and these are both my reels that I did of yeah. this. And it's like, it's so crazy how you're in there and everybody's having fun. It's it's like publicity, yeah. if you will. Yeah. And then this other bar is like it's publicity because of the way that they reacted well, to that, it. Yeah, they they react negatively to it. And yeah. I mean, you know, we you know, Scott owned a bar, right? We did our homework. Yeah. We crossed our T's. It wasn't as spontaneous as everybody thinks. Yeah. You know, it was planned. So you gotta play, you gotta kind of play a little bit like that, yeah. right? Like you can't just yeah, sometimes you can't. But you gotta yeah. be able to read the room. Um, and like, were you there when the, when, uh, our buddy jumped his dirt bike off the, the bar? I think it was, that might've been the year before. Rusty Butcher did that, right? No, he, or, uh, um, uh, Jeremy Wytek. Oh, he okay. was up on the bar and jumped his mini bike off the bar into the crowd and rode out of the route out of the place. That was spontaneous. <laughs> Nobody knew that was going to happen. You it was know. crazy. There were that, that same year, that, that makeup year, this dude walks in with a leaf blower. <laughs> A bag there. of weed, <laughs> a fucking trash bag of like <laughs> weed and just starts fucking. And I'm like, and it was crazy because I had did a podcast with Jeremy the year before and he kept talking about how like, he was like, I, I want dissidents. I want this. I want all this. Like, I want nothing to make sense. Yeah. And I was like, so that was like my precursor to the understanding of the vibe. Yeah. And then you go experience like, I get it now. Yeah. I, yeah. I it's, it. you know, it's, I, I, I always say it's like, you want to have somebody have to make a decision whether they want to join mm -hmm. or they're leaving yeah. because they're at the tipping point of being too uncomfortable. Yeah. It's like, it makes you feel something inside. Mm. You know, you might not, you might not agree or might not be comfortable, but if we can get you to like just get it. out there and try it, it just yeah. changes everything. Everybody is so much more willing to be understandable, to fit in, to help, yeah. like to just like, you know, the other really, interesting point about it you know being someone that's been involved in harleys for so long when you come to the city and even more so during the mama tribe weekend you feel like this whole city is just like they're into harleys <laughs> you know what i mean harley's been in this for 10 years they yeah. took a chance on us they're the first ones to send us a check nice right so i mean we owe them a debt of gratitude a company like that to go out and put their neck on a line for a couple couple dudes that want to put a chopper show on in Milwaukee. It's mm -hmm. special. Yeah. You know, and we we are fully aware of that. We do not take that for granted. Um, you know, we we try to to highlight as much as we can without, you know, yeah. shoving it down people's throats. And they've been awesome. They've given us a carte blanche, man. They they aren't they aren't up our ass about doing this and doing yeah. that and doing that it's a team it's teamwork um and we appreciate that greatly and you know without them i don't think we we'd be nearly where we are yeah right it's just it's again it's a teamwork thing it and everybody's could look, it can look much different you yeah, know what i mean absolutely yeah. it could look a lot different and it does in certain areas and you yeah. can see it and you can feel it um and we're we're lucky enough to to have worked it out to where mm -hmm. it's a team thing we're we're working together 
You know, some other like interviews that you and Scott have done in the past, like Lowbrow, these other ones, it's like something I've been saying a lot to myself this year. And I've, I heard it a lot in y'all's interviews about like letting some things die, you know? Yeah. And, you know, and, and I've been saying that with the, with the concept of letting some things end or die so that other things can begin or be born, you know? And now that you're 10 years into Mama Tried, like how, like, is there any of those kind of notions or feeling or is it so, is everything so like, you know, well oiled right now that it's just like, there's no reason to even think that way? I mean, it's, it's well oiled, but I always have those feelings and notions. Yeah. I was laying in bed last night thinking about it, yeah. you know, um, there's, there's pressure from our side to make sure that we, we stay congruent with the times, um, that we're being aware of whatever situations in the world, right? Like I, we need to get more women in motorcycling, right? So yeah. we're pushing. I want I want to see more women building or riding or whatever. I don't care. Just as long as they're there and they're part of the crew. They've been neglected for for too long, or whatever. It's kids in racing, or it, it's like we just got to make sure that we keep our awarenesses up and try to just keep current. Because yeah. if we if we don't keep current then it will die and mm -hmm. it will because who knows what these kids are coming up behind us are going to be into yeah, i don't know <laughs> but we have to pay attention to it. i'm gonna use my boys and all their friends to learn and i'm gonna immerse myself in all that because i hope that 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 crew will come and be a next wave of rad yeah. awesomeness that are going to fit in with the old white beards you know <laughs> yeah and and add something to it because if if we're not looking to the future and we we turn into curmud curmudgeon old men um it's gonna die it's gonna yeah. die for me you know and i don't think i think <laughs> i think um we've done a good job of of working together you know and trying to be inclusive as we can yeah as, as horribly the, the women, overused as that term is the the women builder thing is something that we've you know I've, I've had people we talk outside of the podcast on the podcast and it's like i i i see more like interest in it like it, you're starting to see it more but it still has like there's still a time thing that's involved oh yeah in it, you know it, so it's gonna it, i feel like it's happening but it's just like it's not something that just happens like that no. i mean you think how long it took you to get to the point to do yeah. what you do it's yeah. like you know now you got interest whether it's two years or five years depending on uh what these individuals what kind of time and effort and dedication and, and obsessiveness they put into it it's how quickly we're going to start seeing that actually come to life. Yeah. You yeah. know, you're seeing a lot more women in trades and you're seeing a lot more women doing these other things. And it's only natural that they're going to start applying these trades to the building yeah. aspect. It's yeah. just time. Yeah. We're, you know? we're here to help foster it. And, yeah. you know, whatever we can do, we're, we'll do, you yeah. know. Um, and hopefully they, they, you know, they're going to make the same mistakes that we all made. Yeah. Getting into it, you know. And, um Hopefully we can inspire to to I don't know make it a smoother transition or like it like I try to learn from my parents you yeah. know I we're here to support and hopefully it hopefully it comes it's because it's so hard to find ladies out there that that um, are doing it and can put it all together to come out you yeah. know it's that's a really hard there's a thing. lot of there's a lot of variables yeah. to be able to you know a lot of sacrifices and yeah. then you know just women in general typically in certain roles that they may play in life already have a shit ton on their plate. You yeah. Know? Yeah, for sure. So, <laughs> if, I, if I compare my wife to exactly. any of that, I'm like, yeah. damn, no kidding. It's no. like, you know, my wife does a lot. And if she's like, Hey, I think I want to be a welder. I'm like, you got time for that? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm like, yeah. I, I guess I'll take the trash out now. Or <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just, you know, I, and it's, I'm not looking for, or we're not looking for full custom, yeah. whatever. I, you want a story. You yeah, want, yeah, absolutely. I want I want someone to be proud to sit next to their bike and talk about it and, and inspire people. Yeah. You know, we could <laughs> I could invite <coughs> all big name this, who that five star book actor, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But it wouldn't be the same. This place would be different. And yep. I'm not interested in that. Yes, there's a place for that, but there's only a few places for that. And it's got to be a right fit. You know, I'm. I'm not looking for the giant like rocket ship climb. I'm I'm slow and yeah. steady, and you know, in another 20 years, we'd look back and be proud of what we did. Yeah, and it's still happening. It's still thriving, and people are still wanting to come. Well, if you if you align your intentions, like 
like what is the purpose of this show if it's about grow 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 big 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 then yeah you're going to chase the biggest attractions you can think of but if it's about substance and about whatever if it's if it plateaus but it still feels good then yeah. that's it's fine. fine it's yeah. fine yeah 100 i'm not i'm not gonna i'm not gonna push hard to where i'm gonna burn out yeah and not enjoy it yeah that's right? important like, yeah i mean it's capitalism you know it, it works in some aspects but at the same time it's it's not always the best for the feel of things. It shouldn't be out front. Yeah. It is required 100%. We yeah. could not do this without money. Yeah. That And I don't care anybody argue argue that point, sell out this or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. I, fine. You feel like that? Then go do your own show and try it on your own and call me in 10 years. Yeah. Right? Money's important. It really is. But it can't be the driving force behind what you're doing. Yeah. Right? It'll just show up if you do and you hold true to what you're doing and you know there's no bullshit and there's no there's no cloak and daggers just yeah. be real and, and it'll happen what's the what's the feel here in milwaukee like you know no show nothing going on just just the bike you know the the scenes like well i mean it's big summer summertime's crazy yeah you know every weekend there's something going on and it's not they're not big not huge we do have our big rallies and whatnot especially when harley homecoming shows up or mm -hmm um you know whatever stuff like that but people like to ride and they're out and they're they've got groups they do there's poker runs galore you want to do poker runs do them really blue in the face yeah um and and they're putting miles on too you know the city's not really full of bikes through yeah. the summer everybody's out you yeah. know 20 minutes from here is beautiful riding you know and and we're we're blessed and lucky that way too right yeah you got the driftless region an hour from here outside yeah. of madison an hour and 20 minutes and the up up north you go to lake superior or on and, and experience the yeah. north woods um motorcycling is great here and it's supported yeah <laughs> the uh, people always get a trip when they're when we're out friday night saturday night it's late hot summer motorcycle rally or not yeah it's it's pretty lawless uh <laughs> you get away with a lot of shit in milwaukee um because people are lenient with motorcycles and and understand yeah. the culture and as long like, as you're not it's almost like almost every family has probably had somebody over the years work right. for the the barn shield yeah. you know what i mean yeah um yeah what about like the you know you can usually like a good city it's got to have it's got to have like like kind of what you were talking about earlier like these neighborhoods of like just, I, I hate to use art, the word art, but like when you have a lot of cool, like good scenes going on, whether it's a music scene or an art scene, like graffiti people, b bike builders, car people, like all these things come together and make, yeah. you know, the, the the hard part is getting them together. Yeah, it always, you know, it's they segregate themselves. Yeah, right. Whether it's the the River West folks uh -huh. or it's the you know, We're the Hispanics down south yeah. or the the black bikers on the west side. Yeah, it you know it's very segregated. Yeah. And, you know, that's kind of what we're here for. We, we want to try to inspire those folks to, to come together throughout the yeah. year, you know, not just in winter, yeah, you know, yeah. all, all together. Like the damn front wheel is damn near in the <laughs> in the frame. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was like, what the hell is that thing? I like there's, it. There's some D-rakes that are kind of obviously out of this world, yeah. uh, good or bad. You know, it's eye of the beholder, I guess. But yeah. like Bare Knuckle Paul's old uh, knucklehead is mm. one of my favorites, you know. Um Al Emerson, one of my favorite builders. He's yeah. kind of like one of my Mount Rushmore of builders guys. I do and freak. I'm going to see him on this trip, and I'm yeah. really excited because his the FXR he's been building for years was one of the big inspirations of my build, mm -hmm. you know. And he's uh, just cool, just to be able to. I mean, I'm fortunate to be able to sit down and talk to people that yeah. I get inspired by, uh -huh. you know. So yeah, it's uh, a little a little winded from the stairs talking and walking up them, but. <laughs> um, but no, that's the thing. It's like a lot of this stuff is not new, but it's very new to me, you know? So walking into a lot of these situations and, and peeling back, you know, like, for instance, I did a, a road trip to California at the first of the year to go podcast with a lot of people. And some of these people are guys that were, you know, like Todd Bluebaugh that was a part of all the stuff that he's done and the yeah. Chun and I all these other. I haven't met Todd yet. Fucking amazing, dude, yeah. in my opinion. And... um. 
you start sitting down with them and you realize like for me i've been going back and reading old blogs from like jeff wright sure. and anybody that you know max shab anybody that's got them out still because mm -hmm. a lot of people took them down and it's like for me i'm i'm getting to go understand the progression of where a lot of this sure. stuff has got to here yeah you do a little it, bit of history or yeah and it's, it's it's so much more it's like it, you know instagram has always been a very inspiring place until it turned into a shopping mall you know yeah. and now it's hard to find it, there's still good shit on there but it's hard it's you got to sift through a lot yeah to it just get doesn't to, come to you yeah you know you, you got to get out and look for it. for it yeah and so the blogs you know to me is like a direct line to things that are more inspirational more sure. informative um and for me that that's just been a a place to to learn to to be inspired to i don't know just history there's so much more to it than just like oh cool he's got the new cbost and yeah. blah 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 like yeah. you know what bars are those you know yeah <laughs> that shit so yeah i don't know it's i feel like right now there's so much good shit out there I, there's a guy, I, I forget his name, here this week. He's supposed to have a book, a photo book that he did for sale. And I can't wait to, you know, go in. I got I got a wad full of cash. I could swap me. <laughs> yeah. I'm waiting to buy shit this weekend. So <laughs> That's another thing about Mama Tried is, is people people come red locked and loaded to spend yeah. some money. Yeah. You know, and, and our vendors are appreciative of that. Because how many times you've been to a show or been to a rally where you, you don't sell dick and you got yeah. all this inventory and you, you just like... Yeah, well, when you're at like a, a rally or something and 90% of the vendors are selling the same things because yeah. they all buy them from the same yeah. thing. So you have... That's what the world's becoming. Yeah. It's like, hey, well, let, let me get into this business. Well, this place sell. This is the restaurant supply for the uh, <laughs> right. for the rally, right? And so they got the same leather uh, vest, the same, you know, leather pasties, the yeah. same LEDs. And yeah. You just, it just sucks. It, it fucking does. sucks. It's boring. You know? It sucks so bad. But when you go to an event where there's there's art, there's there's shops, there's there's the entire gambit of what this is about, you like I said, you got to come with a lot of cash because yeah. you want to walk away with some cool shit. You yeah, know? for sure, for sure. Yeah. And the older I get, the more I respect that and understand that, and thrive for that. Mm -hmm. You know, and the more I get turned off by the, you know, the leather doodad sticker T-shirt thing. Right. Yeah. It's just. Um, Oh, well, if you think about me. like, it, it, okay, say for instance, Sturgis, it's a great example. A lot of circles, especially whenever I started kind of getting into the Dyna culture, they all just, that's for old people. Sure. That's not for us, right? But it's technically for us. It's just that like until we all come there and start making it ours, it's always going to look the way it looks. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of like you were saying about like when you came back to your dad's shop and you saw these other ways that it could be it could grow you know yeah. well i guess learning and living through through life and creating experiences or whatever your own path mm -hmm. you know and, and people are going to go that people are people are going to be there to follow there's followers there's leaders you yeah. know how that goes and you're right like what's the next generation going to do in a place like sturgis what is, where is sturgis headed how what is well the i think the hard part about it is you really don't know who 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 owns it isn't it just like a thing it's just like a thing that like even if sturgis was canceled sturgis would still go on yeah you know i so, talked to a lot of my peers and you know pat the lead sled pats and the bare knuckle pauls and the folks that are staples and sturgis and kind of feel like it's our time to like you know steer the ship a little bit oh 100 percent, and have some fun and and try to i don't know we're not going to change the world we're not going to change sturgis um yeah. but we'll try i think there's you know i'm sure you know like there's a lot of there's the sturgis mafia right yeah you know, there's there's it, it's really hard if you're a small brand to get in there and a small brand with a big influence yeah to get in there and really make changes that's why you've seen it spread out to so many other cities mm -hmm. over the over you know the last 10 20 years from you know the lead uh, lead to deadwood the hill city to all these other places the hard part about it is if you could find a way to get like a lot of these brands, a lot of these one place, you know, people in one spot so yeah. that it didn't have this spread out, like disconnect. You ever hear of the Limp Nicky lot? Uh-uh. Back and look it up. There's probably a blog or something there. Okay. Um, back in Limp the day. Limp Nicky lot. Yeah. Chris Callum's behind it. Okay. Source. 
we that was that was how I that's how I learned Sturgis. It was it was a conglomerate of folks that you're speaking of, all different walks of life, but our hand building things and our you know putting a little care and effort into it. Mostly young folks. Mm-hmm. Um, we'd post up at uh, uh, Broken Spoke Saloon when Jay Allen owned it. Uh, it's where Full Throttle is now. Yeah, and they give us free reign of the place. It was nice. magic. It was, and if that if that whole thing could have progressed and worked, yeah. we could have been twenty years ahead of where we're at right now. Uh, I think it was a little bit ahead of its time, and everybody was pretty young, and nobody was really in in position to you know maybe a couple of the folks mm-hmm. to pull the long haul, but you know we were just trying to figure out how or what we were doing in life. And man, yeah. if, if that one would have stuck, it would have been it would have been pretty dope. Yeah. Sorry. That's all good. Jesus. How did it get off of that? <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, you know, P- Pat's done wonderful mm-hmm. with his his business and I his haven't met him yet. I'm, I'm really, Dude. you know, I'm actually, I bought a sports shirt at Chop. <laughs> so I needed, I, I need to know this man. I Pat, bought shit from him back in 09. Yeah. Like back then when he was, because he was doing a lot of sports shirt products back then. And <laughs> I wanted a cafe, like an old uh, Nightster and shit back in the day. Yeah. And so I bought certain things from him. But yeah, I love He's loved great, it. man. Yeah. And, and his whole crew, they're still, they st- I mean, from the lot days, we still, they're like, they're like brothers, you know. I, I, I would consider Pat a little bit of a father figure in that okay. aspect, right? He, he was light years ahead of where I was when it comes to the motorcycle industry and what he was doing. And, you know, I just kind of latched on as a Grom and, you know, tried to elevate what they were doing and have mm-hmm. a good time. And, and um, yeah, watching, watching all my friends grow like that from back in the day is pretty cool. And looking back on where they were and where I was and where they are now. And it's awesome to have, to have Pat here at Vendon every year. He cares mm-hmm. enough to come up and, and wants to have a good time. And I love seeing him and Pat, yeah. Paul too. And Paul's got a, Paul's got a great business started up over there. And, oh, and yeah. um, you know, starting to get back in with with Chris and and Cycle Source. We drifted apart there for quite some time and we're going to they're doing uh, the grease and gears and um a garage build off for the smoke out next year and we're going to you know winner of that is going to have a spot at Mama Tried. So nice, that's cool. There's another another direction that we're trying to take in like what is, what is what are we doing? What is Mama Tried? Um yeah, what is Mama Tried? <laughs> I I think that the easiest analogy that we've come up with so far is that you look at look at Mama Tried as like a wheel. We're the hub mm-hmm. where it's like, you know, it kind of branches off from there. There's so yeah. many people involved and it's like it, maybe it's a maybe it's a, like a connection point or a hub of of the industry. And we just help we just help drive and push yeah. the industry to keep moving forward and, and be progressive and and. I don't know. It's 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 hard. So that's a little bit of a philosophic thing that needs to needs to be created through the years. And in ten years, I'm going to think about it more than I did in year five. Oh yeah. Oh you yeah. Know? Um, well, you you know, like sometimes the the in, initial nudge, push, or inspiration to start something. By the time five years into it, seven years, ten years, you found the meaning of it you know, through living it, right? Like it's not inherently right there in front of no. you. There were ideas. But I don't then operate you, like that. Yeah, you learn through it. Like yeah. you gain more perspective through the yeah. aspect. And I, I don't think have the foresight like that. It, it's, it's very arrogant to have that, right? The idea is just to go off what things feel like and yeah. be, be present and how everything is like flowing through you at the time. And then, then you look back and you can actually, once you're kind of out of that situation, then you can kind of assess it a yeah. little bit more accurately. Yeah and extract what you actually gained and lost or whatever from that you yeah know? yeah just you know life experience and and being aware and and thinking about just spending a little bit of time just thinking about what's happening not just not just floating through but yeah trying to understand yeah 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 and that's important and i'm i need to be better at it and i'm working at that well it, so the concept of like having an idea and growing it from like the the initial first spots that mama tried took place in the older buildings and stuff it's like you that that's a probably inherently the same heart and soul but a a different vibe 
because of the venue, because oh, yeah. of the things, right? Because, because of the of, position we were at in life. Exactly. Because and, of, you know, I think that these these events unfold and they become what they become based on, like I said earlier, how it flows through each, each individual that comes to it, each builder that comes to it. And yeah. then, you know, one of the things, you know, I, I was fortunate to really start a relationship. Once again, I got to give Danger Dan credit. He helped me build a relationship with Mike from Born Free. Sure. And the conversations I've had with him over the last couple of years and, and my help for working on Texas to help make that kind of go, I'm learning so much through watching them and being a part of it and seeing these events from the other angle yeah. that it's got me always thinking about new ways to kind yeah. of not, I'm going to do my own born free. How can I help make born free better? Yeah, it doesn't, you know? it doesn't, you can, you can even like, you can look at it as how I'm going to make my born free or I'm how I'm going to, you know, make the next, um, you know, FXR ride or, or yeah. because you're being inspired and because you're going out, and your your thrive to learn, your thrive to experience is yeah. is or your drive is like is what keeps you going. It's what makes you who you are, right? And if you ignore that, you're missing yeah. out on a giant part of life. And and the the curiosity of of that, it's kind of a childish, you know, yeah. insight is man, as soon as that gets extinguished, like what are you? Where, yeah. where where are you going? What how why, why are all these, why, why do old, older folks get the stigma of being grouchy and, and just not fun to be around? You yeah. know, did their, did their flame get extinguished a long time ago? They didn't pay attention to it or I don't know. I don't want to be that guy. Yeah. I want to keep living. I want to, oh man, I want to, I want to be in the mosh pit at 75 years old with the, yeah. with the kids. You know, I, I can't, I can't see a life where I'm just like solitary and, and and bombed on life i've noticed and this is an assessment with you know not as many case studies to make it a, a fact uh, or whatnot but i've noticed through a lot of the older people that i've met in my life which we all have it seems like the ones that stop having goals and dreams are the ones that really just settle in and that's when life slowly starts to leave them yeah you know and yeah. And it's dear people in my family that's like that. So it's a yeah, it's a too. close to my it's close to me. But it's a, it's like you try to give them a pep talk, and they're looking at it like that doesn't look fun to me at all. That yeah. seems like or they some, taking on a negative, like you're, yeah. you're like you're um uh you're pushing them too hard, or you're judging yeah. them too hard, and then it becomes personal. Yep. And then it's like you might as well not just stop because yeah. it's, it's wall, walls up, and that's it. Yeah. To to be in your late fifties to to take on a new thing to learn like that's i know that it happens every day but that's something that like i the way that i'm wired i you know, i'm learning to weld right now yeah so it's like maybe it's a generational thing maybe i think that the internet i mean being you know i'm 41 going on 42 so growing up with out it and then with it it was kind of it, it just like man there's just so much information it makes you feel like you can do anything how can you not how can you how can you like <laughs> pigeonhole yourself in anything in life yeah you know yeah you're right you're and right. once you learn how to learn it, you start applying it to everything everything you do. i always tell people that by the time i'm dead i'm gonna know how to do everything yeah. <laughs> i'm not gonna know how to do it very well but i'm gonna know yeah. how to do everything it's like, I want to be the jack of all trades. <laughs> yeah, Master of it. none. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I can get proficient enough at everything just to get by. I might yeah. not ever be a wizard yeah. at everything. But honestly, man, like as a as a, a somewhat accomplished custom painter, airbrush artist, things like that, I don't even care about it anymore. I mean, sure. I love it. I, I truly love it and I'm thankful for everything it brought to my life. But I'm so inspired by other things yeah. right now. On that, to the next. Yeah. It's okay. And you know, I've, I've actually, it's been a couple of year process of allowing myself to feel like that sure. and, and move away from it. I'm a little bit I like that Because I felt like I was racing. cheating on it, you know? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've let racing go by the wayside a little bit. But my kid's getting into it now, so I feel a little, I'm going to come back to it. Yeah. But I'm going to come back to it differently than I did when I was doing it, you know? Yeah. I'm going to, you know, I'm not going to, I'm going to buy a new bike that... I know we'll start and run and and yeah so i can help my son rather than worry about my situation mm. um you know it's just a little bit uh, you know a little bit of an altering situation that i see a, uh an opportunity to spend some more time with my kid yeah right i don't need to make it about myself but i i wouldn't like to enjoy racing every once in a while mm -hmm. you know so 
why bring a hundred year old motorcycle out there to <laughs> fuck around with and maybe yeah. make a race <laughs> yeah you said you had a uh, 10 year old right just yeah, i have a 10 and a four year old all right yeah i got boys. a 22 year old daughter and a 14 year old son and the daughter easiest thing ever in my life really just so easy you know super proud of her like honestly man like even whenever i feel like i should be harder i she just figures it out like yeah. she's so self-reliant you know yeah. son ah. <laughs> yeah that's that's a hard one man like you know he he was born in 2010 and so he's literally he's a product of a lot of things and a lot of things are just so foreign to him even trying to introduce sometimes it's it's pulling teeth and yeah. he doesn't live with me so i don't get to he doesn't get to see me every day or see my life or see who i am yeah. in the same way because it's it's you know an every other weekend situation mm -hmm. you know which sucks you got to reset every gotta reset yeah yeah that's tough. Yeah, you gotta it, it's it's tough especially you know being married to a new woman you know and being you know 10 years with that and then you're you have uh you know when he comes over it's like we have to put food in the house that he likes to eat yep. we have to it, it just really shakes up the entire environment yep. in the house but i also never wanted him to come over and feel like you know hey you know this is how we do it fuck off you know what i mean yeah I mean, you know you know how kids are and, yeah. and how important of um the routine is yeah i mean it's i, I can't stand routines right yeah. like that i'm the I, I don't i don't like it i don't want to do it i don't however i have to because yeah. i have two children that if i do not stick to the routine it's murdersome on everybody mm -hmm. them me my wife my businesses just life in general yeah you know luckily she helps me stay in line with all that so you know i get a little bit less of a routine than she does nice you know? so she's pretty she's she's like a drill sergeant so she's got the house in line and <laughs> i just yes dear you know i try to give her the reins until she yeah. don't want them and then i'll take them and yeah that's know. good yeah so are you uh are you like living in milwaukee proper i live let's call it like 20 minutes northwest of here in a a little village called Landon, right next to Menominee Falls. It's it's great. It's it's kind of like country, but you know, I'm five minutes from everything you ever wanted. Yeah. Um, ten minutes from rad riding. Not even shit. Five minutes from riding yeah. that can just you know. So we have dirt bikes and land, and and my kids ride and <clears throat> get dirty and play in the mud and go outside. Right. It's it's awesome. I have a pretty cool setup. Good life. Mm. shit's good nice yeah what i love about being up here and this is kind of also a mind fuck right now because it's february and i'm in milwaukee we're sitting outside you know and it's like i love like i was telling you when we worked walked out i love this architecture i love the feel of these cities i live in a place where there's lots of cookie cutter modular homes yeah, yeah. and you know because dallas is it's like a hundred i mean it's over a hundred years old but there's a like once you get on the other side of the Mississippi, like there's some the towns are not 200 years old, 300 years old. Yeah. And so you have a lot of different things going on. What yeah. I love about doesn't all look the same. Yeah. What I love about places like this is that you have like basements and you have detached garages. You have this ability to kind of have more of a of, of a like separation within the home to do certain things uh -huh. like that. Yeah. And it's like, you know. I just don't have that where I'm at and in to find something like that is like the oldest part of town. And it's the most, like you're talking million dollar homes. Yeah. It's just out of the question, you know? And, uh, then you come, you know, when I go to places like this, I'm on Zillow and shit, like yeah. checking it out and like, yeah. Oh man, I could probably sell a couple of bikes and get that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. And, but then it's like, like I said, I'm sitting here in February and it's like, I can do this. Yeah. But then <laughs> two weeks from now it's fucking snow up here. Yeah. And but, I'd like it at first until it was like, you know, I don't know man it's I, i've been in the midwest my whole life so i like winter yeah i want it to be winter this as much as i love it right now it sucks bro yeah because it, you go like you're i'm i'm programmed to have winter right snow ice cold but yeah. that also brings snowmobiles and snowboarding and whatever the hell you do mm. in the snow and cold and and um I enjoy all that stuff. We get a kick out of it. It's really, you know, ice That's fishing cool. or whatever. It's um, it's a part of my life for a long time. And not to have that in this like undulation of, eh, it might be winter. Nope, sorry. Here's some yeah. nice weather. But shit, I like that too. I don't know. It's just like this. Just, yeah. Ugh. I don't. 
what I, I'm complaining, but I know that I shouldn't complain. I envy the idea that you actually are almost forced to go back to the drawing board, you know, to, to stop, take more, like be more appreciative of good weather and good, you know, the ability to get out and go be a, a yeah. motorcyclist. Because like in Dallas, it, it's literally, we get like a 30 degree cold snap for a couple of weeks. And then, but even that it's 30, that's the low it's fifties yeah. during the, during the day. Yeah. And then next thing you know, it's, we have 70 degree weather right now. So yeah. it's like, you never really get a chance to check out and go work on those projects the way that you want to, because there's another ride, there's another party, there's yeah. another little just show. Slow down, man. Yeah, that's just what I'm stop, starting to do. Right? My brand's called Fast Life. Yeah. You know, so it's yeah. like, I, I think I'm at the rebrand it. Like, yeah, it's, it's chill life. There's or something, something to be said about just stop. Yeah. Just fucking yeah. sit down, you know, and I'm learning. I'm yeah. trying. I, I do the same thing. Like, I'm made to work. I love working, mm -hmm. <laughs> but. Uh, you know, I'm starting to I'm starting to appreciate, you know, a little bit of a slower pace here and there. Yeah, I'm never gonna stop. But me and my wife just took an awesome trip to Mexico. We just sat on a at a resort, seven days, just sit there. You you able to do that? I did it. Man, I I think that I would lose my mind after day two. I thought so too. For and real? I for this is the first time in my life and our both lives that we didn't go and work on a vacation. I brought my phone. I had my headphones. You know, I went to the gym and, you know, I've answered emails and took phone calls and yeah. swam and just sat there. It was, it was awesome. I uh, had to probably take that, take your advice on that one. It's hard. I think my, my, my wife would love it. I, I just, I'm the I'm the one that's like the roadblock in that, yeah. you know? Yeah, for sure. And, and Stacy and I are both, were, are that, right? Like okay. we both, we, we went into it together. Like, mm -hmm. listen, this is what we're doing. We're going to, we're going to do it. Yeah. No booking this, that, and the other. We're going to just sit there. We're going to have a routine. <laughs> we're going to, you know, get our breakfast, get yeah. our coffee, go chill, get our chair and emails. And then we go, I don't know, take a nap or go for a walk. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it was nice to just, just slow it down. And, but where'd I did Where'd y'all go in Mexico? Cancun. Just Cancun. south, just south of Cancun. Just a big resort. Nice. It's easy. You know, cheap. And it's just been, you know, it's just nice to be, yeah, be in a position where I don't have to worry about stuff. And I got, I got a good crew at the shop. They handle shit while I'm gone. Mm -hmm. You know, I put out fires just like I do for Mama Tried from mm -hmm. afar. Yeah. Um, it worked out great. So in some of the older interviews that I've kind of watched you and Scott on, y'all talked about like this, and it could have been a, a phase or an idea, but about like, doing something more international with the brand with that is that still an yeah. idea like yeah. is there any yeah we're doing it push it's hard yeah um we've been to brazil we've had three shows in brazil oh we've, okay. had, we've been to indonesia uh we didn't have an event in D indonesia but there's some folks in town that we that glommed on and, and became part of the friend group uh -huh. um we're we're gonna go we're gonna do brazil again i think probably later on this year we normally do it right after the show what's that like down there it's great. i mean i guess <laughs> I had a guy from Brazil on the podcast that runs a brand. And I mean, he was telling us that like, you know, of course, I don't know. It, he didn't make it all like, oh, you're going to get stabbed. It's nothing like that. But it's so I mean, do, there's bad. Yeah, yeah. The same shit here. You <laughs> yeah. know, you just got to have you got to you got to be aware of your surroundings. Don't yeah. be stupid. Right. When it's dark. Don't go wander around by yourself. Yeah. Make sure you, you know, we're. We're insulated by folks that take care of us, yeah, you know, because yeah. because we need that, want that, and it's warranted in a place like that, mm -hmm. you know. But it's I don't Ooh. I've been down four or five, six times, and I don't think I've been in one position where I was like scared, mm. you know. But we, like I said, we're we're not. I'm not hanging out in in um you know in the in the part of towns that I shouldn't be hanging out in. Yeah. Um, so I just got to be smart, but man, the, the, the travel part of things is really important to Scott and I, and, um, that's, that's where all that came from. So if we can figure out how to, how to bring mom try to mom try to bring us there and just kind of make friends and, and, you know, hang out and, and have some inspiration, um, from both ends happen. Yeah. I'm in. All right. Let's do it. No, I like that idea. Yeah. We just, just can't, I can't put much, can't put much pressure on it because that yeah. one, there's a lot of, a lot of, 
um, ins and outs that you need to make sure that you're more aware of what's going on because it's different cultures, it's a different mm-hmm. country, and it's different norms. And, and yeah. you know, you just got to be really, really a lot more aware than you are in at home. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're we're learning, and we've ha- we've had our bumps in the roads there, and but we're 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 folks that like to learn and, and are humble, and we'll fess up or man up, and if we made a mistake, and try yeah. to right the ship. If we can't, you know, it is what it is. But we try really hard. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. This uh, like I said, this event, it's amazing. Um, the you know, like so once again, I can't thank you enough for the opportunity to put the bike in it. Um, you know, my FXR, this bike is it's like the first bike in my life that I'm like, it'll never leave, yeah. you know? So there's like a lot of sentiment in it. Um, the motor power plant in there was from a friend that passed away during 2021. Sure. COVID stuff, you know, um, it's from his bike. You yeah. know, there's a lot of like things about that bike for me personally, that's every time I build an FXR, it changes my life. I built one in 17, changed my life. This one, I'm in that change right now. Sure. You know what I mean? Cool. And it's that's awesome. You know, it's it's a big story thing for me, but it's also like I'm not really a show person, but th- I wanted it here because this isn't like yeah. the show. This is an yeah. exhibit. No awards. You know? <laughs> exactly. And I, I like that aspect because I want people to see it because it's important to me. But I also like I don't want them to think that it's that I'm putting it out there because I think it's better than someone else's. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, of course. Um, of course. Also, uh, I really fucked up the exhaust before it got picked up. And, uh, you know, I, I bought this whole welding situation, but I, I'm like, if you dial in the TIG welder yeah. and hand me the torch, I can do it. Sure. You get lost But if in it the starts settings. fucking up, I'm like, yeah, forcing it. And so basically, <laughs> the, um, I also bought a nice little multi tool, uh, like, like belt grinder, uh, sander thing. Yep. And I was just trying to clean up the old stuff off in this little, Amazon pipe that I had on the back half. I made the front half of the exhaust, but the back half was like an Amazon yeah. special. It sanded right through on yeah. the top. Like if you're standing down looking and I'm like, <laughs> and Scott from Simpsons on his way to pick up the bike and I'm shitting bricks. I had bought everything to make a new exhaust system, Yeah, but I wasn't ready yet. I was, when I got home from this trip, the bike was going to come back down to the frame, get all the little details fixed mm-hmm. for this 10 week bike trip I'm doing on this summer. And the, I was going to make a new exhaust with all the new tools. Yeah. Well, I had to take the pipe and make a new one real quick. <laughs> and then I didn't have enough belt discs. So as I was cleaning everything up, it sanded some of the welds because I was going for a really clean look. Yeah. But not all of them because then the sander's gone. <laughs> so there's like, you know, you're the only one that's going to notice it, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, for sure. I mean, it's, you're, you're just, it's a world that like I'm, I'm not trying to come into as like, I guess because I'm so used to the other type of shows yeah. that I'm thinking that other people think this is that type nah, of show. Don't you worry know? about that. Go look yeah. at my bike. <laughs> Seriously. It's fucking, you know, like, I'll, you know, you want to, you want to judge, just judge, but yeah. leave me the fuck out of it. Yeah. You know, like, I did it. I'm proud of it. Fuck off. Yep. You know, and it's just same thing with religion, politics, whatever. Believe in whatever the hell you want. Yeah. Just don't push it on me. Yeah. You know, we can all live together. <laughs> I'll argue with you till you're blue in the face about politics. I'm not going to mad at you. Yeah, yeah. I really like hearing people's perspectives because I learned that way, too. You Same. know, I always float right in the middle of all that. So I'm really I get really uh, confused, you know, and just keep talking about it. It helps a lot. Yeah, it does. Yeah, definitely. Same. I'm a, I'm very middle of the road guy on when it comes to politics as well. And pretty much the same with you. With uh, you know, it's a lot of stuff that don't make sense. It's just like, yeah, whatever. I, it just it really doesn't. And I mean, it's I mean, I'm from Texas. Politics in Texas right oh, now boy. is wild. It's <laughs> I, it's it's wild, but it's like I'm I'm kind of like, all right, well, I, it's it's wild. Like I don't, it, it's there's a lot of things I don't agree with, but at the same time, kind of would rather be there than like California right now. Sure. You know what I mean? Sure. So there's like. The caveats, you of know? course. Everywhere but, you live, there's a caveat. You got to deal with not nowhere's perfect. Exactly. Nowhere's but there's perfect. also like right now, I'm like, man, I want to go to a quiet state. Sure. I want to go to a state that like it's not it's not blown out. Mm-hmm. It's got maybe it doesn't have PCH going down the side of it, but it's got those gems sure. of like culture and, and writing and 
and uh, you know the ability to kind of you know try to have the American dream or, or what version of that exists for this generation or my generation you know yeah um, I'm getting priced out of Dallas where I can't really afford to live there anymore sure you know sure everybody was like oh we're coming to Texas because you can get all this for 300 grand and now everything's starting at 300 grand sure but our economy is good if you're in certain industries but if you're not yeah, I mean, you, gotta, just, you gotta be able to work remote i've been i've been down there and like it's uh expansive yeah you know and there's houses everywhere i'm like what the hell do all these people do where do they go to work i don't understand i don't either because they'll they'll be they'll be acres and acres and acres of home developments and then there won't be a grocery store a gas station <laughs> a restaurant in sight yeah because it's just land development for the most maximum profits and but then you know like and also we're in the bible belt so there's a lot of things that that just like if you want to go to a good bar you got to go to the cd side of town sure you know what i loved about being up here was seeing that pub on the corner you know and it's a it's a you know it's a it's a part of the community in a yep. sense you know yeah it sure is it 100 is you know to me like that that i don't know i mean Maybe it's just my inner drunk wanting to get out and just have a bar closer to home. But it's a church, man. Like it, it's you know it may not have the cross on top, but I yeah. mean it's the way that some people need that in their life. You know, some people it's the barber shop, it's the communication, it's yep. it's talking to other social people. It's social, yeah. Yep. You know, and I, I like those aspects. And up here you got social clubs. We yep. don't really have those down yeah. in Dallas. <laughs> you know, just all those different things, man. It's like I like that shit. I think it's it's um it, it's 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 culture in a way that yeah. like when you live in a place that's kind of newer especially when you go northeast you just it's like have these soul soul isn't built yet or isn't there yet you know yeah. it has no identity people make the identity right like, exactly it's all yeah. new and everybody's from a different place like how do you get it takes a long time to sort that out yeah to, for a community to get built and have like history yeah you know yeah so yeah there's a lot of that to it but I think we're uh we're we're in a good spot. All right, cool. I'm cold as shit too, by the way. You, I don't know how you're doing, you know, ears out, arms out. Like I'm I just, good. I'm good. You're, you're acclimated. Like, yeah, dude. I, I'm yeah. I got that. I got that different blood. Yeah, you you wear shorts until it's like 20s, and then you yeah. put pants. I on. mean, my socks get taller. <laughs> okay, you know. You <laughs> <laughs> well, Warren, thank you uh, for everything. Uh, the hospitality here, being able to do this and have other people on and all the, just everything. And thank you guys for putting it out. I wish Scott was here to say thank you as well. Um, and I do appreciate it. I'm looking forward to do the show. Awesome, man. Thanks for coming. As long as you guys put it on. Yeah, so. we appreciate it. You know, all the all the press, negative or positive, we love it all. all right. yeah, <laughs> so all bring right. the heat and appreciate it. All right, buddy. Thanks thank for you. coming. Appreciate it. All right, buddy. All right, my phone's blowing the fuck up.